Hello and welcome back to Currently Kent. Today's topic is water cooling fittings. So there's a lot to cover here, so let's just dive straight in. Uh, first thing you're gonna wanna determine is whether you're gonna do a soft tubing or a rigid tubing build. That'll help you figure out which fittings you'd like. So for soft tubing, you have compression fittings like this. And for hard tubing, this is what the fittings will look like. Now some commonalities between the two. They both have G and a quarter inch ports, male threaded on the bottom side. And they both have a collar that unscrews. Now, if we look at the soft tube fitting, this barb section is actually what goes onto the tubing. So we'll put the collar onto the tubing first, then attach the tubing to the fitting. And at this point, it's pretty securely on there. You actually don't really even need the collar. I mean, you can get away with a zip tie if that's kind of the thing that you're into, but uh, these came with collars, so I use the collar. Tighten that down. And there we go. Now we have a very secure connection here between the tubing and the fitting. The way that it works for rigid tube fitting is slightly different. Inside of the collar, we have an O-ring here. Inside of the fitting itself, there can be one or more O-rings inside, but in this instance, the collar goes on, followed by the O-ring. Then we can insert the tubing into the fitting, slide the O-ring down, slide the collar down, and tighten it into place. Now, this connection is not quite as secure as the soft tubing compression fitting. Um, however, it's secure enough. I can give it a decent pull here and it doesn't come out, but at a certain point you can actually get it to come out of there, which shouldn't be a problem unless you uh, are <laughs> moving your PC around a lot while you're using it, which would be silly. Uh, we need to talk about the measurements. So this is a point that it's pretty simple if you just say match the inner diameter of the tubing and the outer diameter of the tubing, match that with the fitting that you get. So in this case, the inner diameter needs to be wide enough to go around the barb. The outer diameter needs to be less than the outer diameter of the collar. Otherwise, it's not gonna be able to go on there. So that's what you need to pay attention to with soft tube fittings. Uh, with the compression fittings, you wanna match the tubing size for the inner and outer diameter. And for the rigid tube fittings, really the only thing that matters on the fittings themselves is the outer diameter. Those need to match. These are both, for example, 16 millimeter um, tubing and 16 millimeter fitting. You do need to pay attention to the inner diameter of uh, hard tubing in the event that you would like to bend the tubing at some point because you're going to purchase a bending cord or a bending insert. Basically, this needs to match the inner diameter of the tubing. And it needs to be a fairly snug fit in there. If you don't get it snug enough of a fit on the inside, as you go to do your, your bends, you can get flat spots or even worse, you can get some kinks on the inner radius of your bend. So obviously if it is too thick of a bending insert, it's not gonna make it inside the tube. So that's why the inner diameter uh, for hard tubing would come into play. So now there are very seldomly, I would say, you can get through a build using just either the hard tube or the soft tube fittings. Usually we need some sort of adapters. Uh, so the first one we'll talk about are 90 degree adapter fittings. Here we have a look at two of them. These are different brands. This one is from Bits Power and this one is from EK. So slightly different look, slightly different finish, but they do share some things in common. Once again, they have a G and a quarter male threading at the end here, and that is the industry standard. So all of the components that you're going to be using these fittings with will have the female threading of the same G and a quarter inch uh, threading. So I've got both of them installed here. And some things I wanna point out is, obviously there's a pretty considerable height difference here between the two, but Another thing they share in common is that these are, these are both rotary fittings. So that means I can freely rotate the top while the bottom stays in place. 
which is nice because if you don't get these fittings as rotaries, you're going to end up stuck in whatever position the threading ends out at. So maybe uh, let's just say, let's just say you tightened that fitting all the way down and you're left with something that's maybe at this angle or maybe at this angle. Great thing about the rotary fittings is that you're in control of where it ends up. The next one I want to talk about is an extension fitting. And it looks like this. This is an extension fitting. It's got G and a quarter male threading on one side and G and a quarter female threading on the other side. Where these come in handy is, let's say, this is our CPU block right here. Right next to it, typically we have RAM and the RAM will stand a little taller than the, the height of the CPU block. So let's say I needed my run to go this way. Maybe it was gonna do something like this and end up somewhere else in the case. Well, if I just have my 90 degree adapter on here, there's a good chance I'm going to foul the RAM. But if I get a little bit of height with an extension fitting like this, now I have hopefully uh, enough clearance to get past whatever obstacle might be in the way. Um, these come in various sizes. Uh, this I believe is a 25 millimeter extension fitting. They go, you know, five, 10, 12, 15, 17, a bunch of different um, heights to allow you to get around the case in ways that you might need. Where else this can come in handy is I've got a radiator right here. And we all know most fans are about 25 millimeters tall. Let's say my run needs to go this way across the radiator. Well, if I install my 90 degree fitting here, uh, well, that's not gonna happen. I'm gonna run basically straight, straight out of here into the fans. So again, we can get an extension fitting on here. And then we can get our 90 degree rotary adapter. And then we could have our hard tube fitting here. And now, hopefully again, I've made enough space here to clear the fans. There are some variations on the uh, angled adapters. This one is a, a snake fitting. I thought it was just kind of cool, so I'd, I'd include it in the video, but it's uh, rotatable here. And so you can have it do all sorts of interesting uh, shapes and help you get to and from where you need to go as well. Uh, this one though, we see has two uh, female threaded G and a quarter on either side. Next up, I've got some multi-port fittings here. So this one has two ports on the side as well as a male threaded G and a quarter on the bottom. And this one actually has three. So I've got one on the top and one on each side there. So where these come in handy is, let's just say for example, you had a, another fitting like this. This is a temperature sensor, but it doubles as a stop plug fitting. So these are great because you can uh, monitor the temperature of your coolant inside your loop and then tie uh, that temperature to your fans. Makes the, the fans uh, ramp much less dramatically if it's tied to the coolant temperature sense over time. It's not likely to rise as quickly as any of the components that it will be cooling. Here is the multi-port fitting onto the CPU block. Now let's say I had, I don't know, let's say my tubing run was gonna come out this way somehow. And on the other side, I could install my temperature sensor as a stop plug fitting. So then this would go to any uh, two pin temperature header on your motherboard or fan controller if you have those available and you'd still be able to have your loop kind of continue in order. So those are great. And while we're on the topic of stop fittings, they are also sold as standalone pieces. They don't have to have a temperature sensor connected to them. The, these are fantastic when it comes time to do loop maintenance. And let's say I've drained out some of my coolant and uh, my CPU block is now without any fittings on it and I wanna take it out of the case. Well, if I get a couple of these stop fittings, I can put them to plug both of the ports on whatever component I'm gonna be taking out because no matter what you do, as this sits inside of a case, there's bound to be some coolant in there somewhere. So it's really a nice peace of mind to be able to stop these up before you take them out just on the off chance that there's a little bit of coolant still living inside there. And on the subject of draining your loop, which is uh, something you need to consider before you build it. Hopefully uh, you're seeing this video before your loop is built or all of your fittings are ordered. Draining is very important and considering where you're going to drain from is also very important. And so here we have a drain valve. And you can see both sides of it have 
the female threading for a G and a quarter fittings. So the way this can work is let's say, let's say this radiator here has multiple ports on the front and the back side. Well, let's say that maybe, maybe I'm using these ports in my loop. And so they have uh, fittings and tubing runs attached to them. And then I've got this port left over here. So what I would get is some kind of a male to male fitting like this one. I can then attach this to my unused port on the radiator and then attach the ball valve to that. Okay. And so at this point I have my ball valve in the open position. Maybe we can see a little daylight through there. And then if I turn the handle, now it is in the closed position. There's a ball inside that closes, hence ball valve. So these are great because uh, you can then use maybe a leftover fitting or a leftover piece of tubing. You can attach to this side when it comes time to drain. Attach your tubing to it and to your uh, bucket or whatever it is that you're going to be draining the coolant into and then open up your valve let your loop drain as much as it can close it back up right before you uh, refill and then we have one more specialty fitting here that I would like to talk about and these are offset fittings so here's an example of an offset fitting again male thread a G and a quarter on one side and then female threading for the G and a quarter on the other side these come in a lot of handy when you need maybe just a millimeter or a few millimeters one way or the other to make a run line up perfectly. So you can see what happens with this as I install it onto the component and then I'm free to rotate it here because again this is a rotary fitting so I can rotate it wherever I need it to be. Let's say uh, maybe, I need, maybe I needed that on there so that way I could make my run go this direction. So you can see here, there's a little bit of an offset there, moves it over just a bit. And these also come in various lengths. So uh, this one I believe is a seven millimeter offset. So it's not much. And then you can go up to 12, 15, 20 millimeter offset. Uh, these things are very, very handy in the right circumstance. I'm going to wrap up this video with uh, even more of a specialty fitting. These get uh, a lot of questions on them on the water cooling enthusiast discord server so I thought I would uh, do a quick run through with these. These are quick disconnects and you need to buy them as a pair and there will be a male side and a female side. It doesn't exactly matter which one's male and female just so long as you get both a male and a female. These, uh, this version is a component mount. They also make panel mount versions of these and these are often used for people that are going to do some external cooling uh, with an external radiator. So it's a great way to get uh, out of a case or back into a case uh, one way or, or, or the other. And they're also used by people who change out components an awful lot. Um, you know, overclockers, professional overclockers and stuff like that will have a lot of parts that they go through. So where these are great for that is I've got my side that will go into the component here. Okay, so that's into the component. Now I've got the other side, and it has a collar on it and a barb, just like our compression fittings. <clears throat> so then it acts very similarly here from the compression fittings. Basically, you slide your collar on, then tubing goes onto the fitting, and then the collar comes down to lock it into place. Now, from here, this piece then goes and is inserted into the other section of the quick disconnect. These are uh, made by coolants, by the way, and these are the QD3s. So now that it's here, I can complete the demonstration. So I've got my loop all filled. It's been working for some time. Uh, maybe I bought a new CPU and I want to install it today. So let's say I've got another quick dis disconnect on the other port here. So what I can do is press down on this collar and the tubing and the other half of the fitting will pop off. And then I could freely move my tubing out of the way. Then I could take my CPU block off, uh, take out the old CPU, put in the new CPU, bring my water block back, secure it into place, 
and then simply reattach the quick disconnect to the component. Okay, and so we're gonna end the video here. Hopefully uh, this was enough of an intro to fittings to help you make some uh, intelligent purchasing decisions. Thank you.